O my Lord, make me brave, brave, brave. And make my past easy for me, easy for me. A faith step onto the cloud of Islam And you will discover the light of Iman Proclaim this message entrusted to you And the cloud of Islam will carry you What is the difference between Islam and Christianity? Why did God have to become a man and die? Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. He's made to believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians do not believe today. If a price has to be paid for our sins, why can't we just go find a sinless man and execute him and say, there, the price is paid? To which people always said, no, if a man dies, it's not enough. It has to be someone who is God and man, and God man. and man. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now discussion time or question time. However, there are a few rules which you must follow. Firstly, it is our desire to canvas as broad a spectrum of questions from as large a number of the members of the audience as possible. Each person is therefore restricted to one question. I know sometimes it is unavoidable preceding a question with an explanatory discussion where this is absolutely necessary I request you to be extremely cursory or succinct however if at all possible try and avoid try and avoid proceeding a question with a discussion ladies and gentlemen you're now invited to walk up to the mic which is a few meters away from ourselves if at all possible to name yourselves and to state your designation as for example Mr. John Doe, teacher. If you'd prefer to remain anonymous, that suits us. And from there, to put your questions. Ladies and gentlemen, you may now walk up to the mic and ask questions through myself. Ladies and gentlemen, we have gathered you today in the name of God and this gathering it will make us understand what God is for most of all what I'd like to ask these people here who are teaching us a very simple question that we may understand what God wants us to do okay do you, can I speak to you? you ask me how do we know what God wants us to do? is that what the question was? that's it by theology. The word theology means God's relation with man and the universe. Why did God create man and the universe? Where is the answer to this question? That's OK, you're finished. That's okay. it. Theology is uh, an invented word, which just means the study of God. And it's not a science like biology is, so that you want to know something about biology, you go and get a book about biology and you read and you, you grant that what you read is true. Theology, anybody who wants to write about God can write about God. So you can't go and pick up a book about theology and say everything in it must be true. It's like biology. It's not a science like that. It's filled with everybody's opinion. So people's opinions have to be sorted out according to how much they're worth. Now the human mind will reach to a certain point, get some points correct and some points false, but a careful man is supposed to be able to choose, this is the true, this is the false, this makes sense, this is nonsense. Okay, so for a start, you've got your own mind. What you can figure out for yourself and what you can judge from what other people have told you, you take input and so on, to come down to the final detail of it, you need a revelation from God because the human mind is different from anything else you find in creation. You find little insects, they need something to eat. Sure enough, there's something provided for them. 
bigger animals, they need food, there's something else they eat, the plants have something they eat. Everything is provided all the way up the scale. You get to the human being, things are provided for him. There's a place to eat, a place to sleep, and so on. But he's got something nothing else has, a mind that asks questions. So it's only reasonable to believe that if something is provided for all of his other needs, he has a need to know something must be provided. He should look around somewhere, he should find the provision that answers his questions. And that is the nature of revelation. Now, of course, there's lots of books that say this is a revelation. They make that claim. But again, you have to judge the authority. This book says it's from God. Read on. Does it sound like God or not? Okay? What's that now? We are not atheists. Uh, God has given us a guidance. Yes, I agree. God has given us a guidance. Where is the guidance, please? I just told you, you're going to find it in some book somewhere that says this is a revelation from God. Okay. Let's you, you figure it out as you go along which ones are worth the title, which ones deserve to be called a revelation, and which ones don't. It's up to you to figure it out in your head. Okay. Let's, let me ask you one more question. The book. Let Thank me see the Bible. Thank you, you Mr. That? Miller. Are there any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Unfortunately, we don't have time to accommodate more than one question from one person. Are there any other questions, please? Will you please take your seat, sir? My question is very brief. I would like to ask Mr. Sida, from the Quran, from the Bible, I can give him at least 25 predictions made by different prophets over a long period over 1,600 years apart. And they were all fulfilled in connection with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in three days. All those predictions. Is there any prediction made in the Quran which does not relate to the prophets of the Old Testament? Thank you, sir. Mr. Didat? Uh, just uh, to clarify the question, is there any prophecy of the Quran, you say, which does not relate to what I, I lost you there, I'm sorry. Which is not taken from the Old Testament. Oh, is there any prophecy in the Quran that doesn't come from the Old Testament? That's not taken from the, yeah, from okay. the Old Testament. Yes, sure. Uh, if It depends on what you mean by prophecy. If you're talking about a prediction of something to happen, yeah. You have, for example, one of those falsifiable statements, as I said. I believe he was quoting it when he talked. The Quran says to the Muslims, you will always find that those closest in love to you will be the Christians rather than the Jews. You see, today, that still stands there. It stood for 14 centuries to the Jews, telling them, you Jews want to prove Muslims are wrong here. The Quran tells you what to do. It says, treat us better than the Christians do, and we'll believe you. You see, it's told the Jew, all you have to do is start treating Muslims very nice. Let a few years go by, then say to the Muslims, doesn't your book say the Christians are better friends than we are? Look, look, we're better friends. But they never thought of it. That's Wait, a prophecy. My see. question was for Mr. Sadat to answer. Oh. <laughs> There are prophecies in the Quran at the time of the Prophet ﷺ when they were under trials and tribulations, when there seemed to be no hope. God Almighty gives the Holy Prophet Muhammad a hope that he is going to conquer. And they will be able to return to Mecca and perform their Hajj. Then there is a chapter in the Quran called Surah Rum. Rum. And in that Surah, the incident that is referred to is that the Persians and the Romans, they were at war. And the Persians conquered the Romans. And in the Quran, they were told that within a small period of time, the Romans will once more again conquer the Persians. These are prophecies being fulfilled in the lifetime of the Prophet. And, and a standing prophecy about the supremacy of Islam over all the religions. You see, in the Holy Quran, we are told, it says, that the God Almighty has given Muhammad in Islam a religion, a way of life that is going to conquer, supersede every way of life, whether it be Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism. And from the uh, figure that I gave you at the beginning of my talk, where I said, that there are a thousand million Muslims in the world today as against 1,200 million Christians. Numerically, people who fill census form, 1,200 million. But if you take into account 
that Islam started 600 years after Christianity. You can see the obvious that Islam is superseding every other way of life. And in the Plain Truth magazine of some few months back, there were figures given of the progress or the growth of each and every religion on earth, each and every philosophy. And in that, you'll find the highest percentage of progress was given to Islam, something like 235% as against the Roman Catholics, as against the Hindus. that is in is being fulfilled all the time i hope that answers your question protect your worship is your worship plagued by random mental activity wandering thoughts care for your worship Corrupt intentions. Do you lack Ihsan? Focus. For sure and humility. Perfect your worship. Watch, 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 watch. With me, Abdurrahim Green on Peace TV. How to save your worship from being corrupt in inner dimensions of worship. Every Monday at 11.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 12.30 a.m. UAE on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem? Joint family system. Heaven or hell? Big fat You choose. Beauty. Wealth. Family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Sunday at 7 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 8 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. He who revived a sunnah of mine, then people acted upon it, would earn a reward similar to the reward of the one who acted according to it. Nothing would be deducted from his reward. Rasulullah said, I have left behind me two things. If you stick to them, you will not get lost. The Quran and Sunnah. Let's make Sunnah alive. Next on Peace TV. I simply want to say that I agree with everything both speakers have said, except for the second speaker on one issue. Uh, does he first of all agree with me that, that God created the universe as well as us? Do you believe that God created the universe as well? Yes, do you? Mr. Yes. Miller. Okay, so if I understand your question, you're saying, do I believe that God created the universe as well as us? Yes, that's right. All living creatures on this planet as well. Yes, of course. You it, do. I, I don't know if you, it depends on how you mean create. Somebody told me a story the other day that said when he made man, he rolled up his sleeves and he made man. No, I don't believe that. No, no, no. But I well, create. However it happened, he created. Yes. However it happens, yes. That, uh, I, I'm willing to go along with that. Okay. Okay, however he created it. The, the fact is you agree that God created everything. Now, you said it was not possible. Look, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, talking for Christianity or anybody else. You said that um, Christ could not have been of virgin birth. No, I didn't say that. No, 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 I didn't say that. No, no, misunderstood. I didn't say that. No. Well, okay. Be sure, you misunderstood me then. I didn't say that. No, no. No, no, no. What I said uh, was uh, people, when they use this argument, when they say, who was his father, and they say God was his father, I, I asked them, do you mean God took Mary as wife? I'm not denying that he had, I'm saying he had no father. That's physically possible. Some biologists will tell you you can, you can do it today. You can, you can make a child without a father. It, it, you take, uh, like they do with rabbit eggs, and they, what are they called, diploid? You put the, if, you, if they touch each other, they will reproduce. But that's uh, yes, it's that's, possible. That's no problem. Accidental impregnation, I agree with that. Okay. But tell me, if God himself chose to send or chose to come to this planet, to the people whom he created in the form of a human being, 
Why do you think that he should have limitations and that he should not be able to do that? No, I didn't say, uh, I didn't think he should be able to do that. What I'm pointing out to you was, uh, you have to clarify what you, you mean. If you say God became a human being, I still want to know what you mean. Do you mean he used to be God, but now he's a man, he's not God anymore, or do you mean something else and so on? That a person, it's not, it's too easy to say, uh, God took on the form of a human being. I want to finish it for me did he surrender some of his physical powers and they'll usually tell you yes and then I say did he surrender his mental powers and they'll have to think about that and say well no yes maybe he did I don't know and so on you have to clarify what do you mean if you say God became a man you have to really explain what you mean before I could possibly agree with you what you are looking for now is scientific proof no no I'm looking for an understanding of what someone means it's a it's like me asking you is it colder in the winter than it is in Alaska? And you're going to say, what are you talking about? In the winter than Alaska? And so you've got to clarify it. If you say, could God become a man? I'm saying, you explain to me what you mean, and I'll tell you whether I agree or not. You need a clear explanation of, do you mean he gave up everything godly, and so there's no God anymore, he's become a man, but somehow he will become God again? Or do you mean he is a man, and he's God, in which case I want to know, then is he mortal or immortal? Uh, you know, does he know everything or not, and so on. You see? All right, to answer your questions, I'll just assume that God became a man and remained God. Why was that not possible? Because if he I created said, the universe, why couldn't he do that? Because it is a logical mistake that people make when they say God can do anything. It's not true. God cannot do anything unless you believe he does stupid things. No, Does he do foolish things? Does he do weak things? Does he do silly things? He is limited because he's God to doing godly things to start with. Now, if you tell me he is a man and he is God, I simply have a natural question. I'm saying, could they kill him or not? Is he mortal or immortal? God is immortal, man is mortal. Which was he if he's both and so on? To say, if he is a man, a man by definition has limitations. It's what makes him a man. He doesn't know everything. That's why he's a man. If God is a man, what is this being then? Does he know everything or only some things? If he knows only some things, he's a man. If he knows everything, he's God. You see, that's the problem. It's that you cannot combine the two, or so far no one's ever done it for my satisfaction. You combine are, the two. You are simply using human logic. Of on, course. On, is there a better on, kind of logic? Where do I find that it? was capable of creating the entire universe, you are now applying human logic. Okay. No. Is there another kind of logic? Where do I find it? Because if there's a better logic, you tell me where I can go find the textbook. I want to know about it. Well, if you say in the one breath that he created the universe as well as everything that lives on this planet, you have to accept that anything is possible. I just told you why God cannot do everything, because my God cannot do stupid things. So he has some limitations. He only does godly things. I'm sorry, sir, but okay. your definition of stupid Thank you, Mr. God's Miller. definition won't die. Thank you, sir. The next question, please. <clears throat> I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will ask Mr. Miller a question. Um, first of all, how much were you paid to come down here? I think, Mr. No, Miller... Have, no, no, you must have come in late. I explained that. No, no, you did explain that, but um, I feel that uh, there's something fishy about it because you okay, let yourself well, down. As I told you, in Islam... You said that nobody paid your fare. That's right. But That's right. Seems like uh, you're telling a lie. Okay, but you see... You're if, a liar. If your religion in the name permits, of the Lord Jesus Christ. If your, religion, if your religion permits you to call a man a liar without proof, that's to your shame. My religion doesn't permit me to call a man a liar unless I bring the proof. Right. Thank you. Is it a question on the merits of the discussion, or is it some defamatory statement which you intend to make? Yes. Please restrict yourself to the merits right. of the discussion. Fine. Yes, go ahead okay. and ask your question. <clears throat> Mr. Miller, if I had to take an orange and in front of you peel this orange and slowly cut it into many pieces, and then I take this orange and I slowly eat this orange piece by piece, and eventually when the orange has been eaten and I ask you a question, Mr. Miller, how does that orange taste? What would you tell me? 
Question. That's right. Your question. You're telling me if you eat an orange, yes, and then you ask me how did it taste? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. right. I can tell you how most oranges taste, but I have no idea how the one tasted that you ate. That's right. Uh, uh, uh. That's right, Mr. Miller. Mm. You haven't tasted Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. You see, but you haven't experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. You haven't experienced the power of the Holy Spirit and the new birth in Jesus Christ. Fine. You now, you, me off are it. you finished with your question, or do you want to give another yet. lecture? Because if you want to give a lecture, we'll come and hear you sometime. But you know, this was supposed to be a question period. The mic on me. Do you ha you asked a question? I gave you an answer. Yeah, fine. You, I a you asked a question. I gave you my answer. If you say you have experienced the power of Jesus Christ, God bless you. That is your business. You see, you see that that is that is your. That's right. That is your business. I understand. I'm not a child. I understand your point. I just said, if you have sampled this wonderful power and so on, that is your business. It's not something you can give me. God has to give it to me. Okay? So don't, don't tell me you're going you're gonna to save me somehow, because if God gave you this thing that's between you and God, be my guest. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you have a question, sir? So ask one question to Mr. Didat. When you die, where are you going? <laughs> Mr. Didat. Yes. Yes. By the grace of God, I believe I will go in heaven. Inshallah. But now, is uh, the next questioner, please. Sorry. Will you please take your seat, sir? The next person to the mic. <laughs> Mr. Miller, for the benefit of most of the Christian people here, I'd like to ask you a simple question. Are you a Christian or a Muslim? Mr. Miller, I thought I made that clear by what I was summing up by. You see, names like Jew, the meaning is one who praises God, Jew. I'm a Jew, I praise God, but I'm not capital J-E-W means I'm an Israeli citizen or something, Jew in the meaning. Christian is not a Christ-given name. Jesus never said, call yourselves Christian. That was a nickname that was given years after his time. But if by Christian you mean one who follows Christ, I am a Christian. In the same way, Muslim is not a label. It means you're an Arab or something. Muslim means one who submits his will to God. I'm a Muslim, I submit my will to God. If you want to say your salvation belongs according to some label, I'm sure you don't. You're more sensible than that, I'm sure. But if you say your label belongs to something, you fall into this trap, as the Quran says, do they say they have a contract with God so that their salvation happened at this time, never mind they lived for 40 more years, their salvation happened at this time, whereas I believe you struggle till the day you die. Any day, any given day, someone can say, what's your standing if you were to die right now? Are you ready to meet God? Yeah, I know whether I am or not. But I can't say, and a week from Tuesday, I am still saved. I don't know till a week from Tuesday because I'm struggling and fighting with it until that day. That is a large difference between kinds of people who grab labels or say, I have my salvation already, and other people who are not so quick with the labels and say, my salvation, I'm working on it. I'm going to work on it till the day I die. In other words, you are a Muslim. I'm happy to be a Muslim, yes. Happy to be a Muslim. Thank God. Thank you, yes. Mr. Muller. Right answer. Yes, sir, your question. My question is this. When I'm asking a question, please don't put the mic off. Because this is what you did in the city hall. If you want to answer a question, you answer it full. So First, I want to tell you, praise the Lord. Before I start my question. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. What I want to ask you is this. It has been mentioned from the platform that are all are born Muslims. I want you to prove that I'm a born Muslim. No problem. No problem. If you can understand what I mean by Muslim, the demonstration is there. You could study it, and there's more books on the subject than you could read. Now, do you want the answer or not? My wife can prove it to you. I am not a born Muslim. Do you want proof or not? You ask me for proof. Do you want proof or not? Do you want proof or not? You ask me for proof. Now, as soon as I open my mouth, you tell me I'm not. If you want proof, I'll give it to you if you be quiet. The proof is what you will find if you investigate what 
do people believe if no one comes and tells them what to believe? If you want to read the documentation of cases of people like the Kapauku tribe of Papua who never met civilized man till the 1920s, if you want to read the documentation of what did the aborigines of Australia believe before the white man came there, and so on, if you want to read the documented belief, what did they believe before someone came and told them what to believe, you will find it is Islam in everything but name, because they don't speak Arabic, they don't say Islam, their religion is the same. God is one, he has no sons, he's not subject to aging, and so on, and so on, and so on. The proof is there. Well, all right. Are there any other questions? Are there any other questions? It is the prerogative of anyone who wants to express their opinion to invite either of the speakers to a debate and then to exercise their rights to express their opinions. You are now availed of opportunity of asking questions on the basis of the discussions presented. If people do not persist in jeering, laughing, joking, wasting time basically at the mic, I think fruitful and important questions will be passed through from which people can learn. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an assembly of God. We are discussing divine issues, important issues, intrinsic to our lives. Those who persist in jeering and laughing are to say the least absolutely unstable.